Oops. <laughs> hey, what's up? I know you guys have been waiting a long time for this show. Because uh, it's been on deck since probably last fall. But I had to kind of put it aside because, you know, February. And then after that, stuff started going all wrong in my life. So here we are. So I came back to it. And uh, today we're going to talk about a subject that's very, it's like at the core of what goes on on this channel. Because we deal primarily with single women who are looking for, well, I mean, some, you know, dating around, looking for a relationship, whatever, looking to get married. Anyway, there's some interaction with the opposite sex. Now, this is no shade to anybody who chooses some other, other kind of sexual expression. I, on this channel, deal with heterosexual relationships because that is the extent of my, my knowledge and expertise. So, you know, I just want to put that out there because I don't want people saying, well, what about the hell? Okay, I can't help you. Okay, I don't know nothing about it. I can't have personally experienced it. I, you know, it's just not my, it's not in my bag of tricks. So, um, we're going to, you know, I deal here with what I know and what I feel comfortable with uh, educating people about. And so I stick to heterosexuality. So in this particular broadcast, we're going to be talking to primarily focusing on women who date men. And the reason that I think this is important is, that, like I said, not only because it's the foundation for everything that goes on as a single woman, the, most people don't really do it that well, this whole dating process. But it's the kind of thing that, you know, you know how I like to do things. I like to... I don't like to tell people what to do. I don't tell you what to do unless you write to advice column that I tell you what to do. But in general, that's not what, what our goal is here. My goal is to raise awareness, to teach you how to look at things that you maybe have never questioned. You've just been told these things your whole life. You read them in magazines. You saw them on the news. You you know, your family did it or whatever. So you're modeling after them. You never really sat down and thought about what it is that you need in your particular role or interest in all these different social structures. So that's what I, you know, what I like to do on this channel. So today we're going to talk about dating. We're going to talk about courting. We're going to talk about the common denominator in both of those, which is a quote boyfriend. Now this starts early. You think about it. It starts, I mean, like practically out the womb, you know, as soon as people start looking at you, I know this happened with my daughter and it just it just irritated me. My husband cussed a couple of folks out, his male friends that had sons. And uh, they, you know, here's this a newborn baby, okay? She's been out the womb like five minutes. And 10, okay, just say an hour or two because they did come right away. I'll just say an hour, okay? So you've been out the womb a whole hour. And here they come, you know, talking about, oh, you know, she's going to be so beautiful, so fine. I'm going to hook my son up with her to be her boyfriend. Okay, can, can, can she just breathe first? Can we finish all her medical things and figure out what she's going to be doing with herself? Can we as parents kind of start figuring out her personality and what it is that she wants to do and guiding and instructing her? You already trying to get in her head about some man and aligning herself with a quote boyfriend. It doesn't change. It, it doesn't get any better. Okay. That's, that's from birth. Then they start giving you all the little cooking sets and, you know, teaching you how to dress up and giving you plate high heels and all this kind of stuff. Right telling you how to be dainty and girly and ladylike and what men don't like and all this kind of stuff. And it starts, you know, little girls start reading Teen Magazine and Seventeen and all these kind of things. And then their friends start talking about getting a boyfriend. And, you know, the girls who don't have a boyfriend feel rejected and dejected and left out and like something's wrong with them. And the young teenage girls feel like they have to go through all these changes. They have to make, a, you know, get a guy's approval so that he'll choose them and pick them. And they won't be the only one without a boyfriend. I mean, if you really think about the mind game that's played on girls about this boyfriend thing. It's like you can't get away with it. I mean, you have to be a very conscious woman as a parent, auntie, big sister, whatever. You have to be very conscious of this kind of social programming in order to fight against it. You have to be able to tell your little your baby sister, your daughter, your granddaughter. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's fine. I had a husband. I had a boyfriend when I was growing up and that. But that was not my primary focus. And if I didn't have one, I didn't feel bad about myself. I mean, I see that as I'm the cake and he the frosting. Sometimes, you know, like pound cakes and stuff like that, you don't want no frosting. The cake is just 
fine just by itself. So you have to kind of reframe things for girls because some of them really feel that something's wrong with them if a guy either A, doesn't want to be with them or B, um, breaks up with them. They just feel devastated, like they're worthless and all this kind of stuff. So I did a poll. I did a poll and I asked women, well, let, let me wait first. Let me, I'm getting, I'm getting ahead of myself. Hold on a second here, people. Let me pull up my lovely slideshow. You know how we do it around here? We got to have our slides. There we go. This was the main question. You know, when you think about the advice column, the books that I've written about relationships and the stories that you've had about relationships, the divorce rate in this country and all this, you know, all this angst and drama, the violence against women at the hands of these quote boyfriends, the violence against their children by these new, these, you know, boyfriends. I mean, when you really think about it, how does having a quote boyfriend really benefit you? Because I'm all about what's in it for me. There's in case you're confused about that, there's a two video series on this channel called WIIFM, which is that what's the acronym for what's in it for me. Please take a look at that and it will kind of refresh you about what you're supposed to be getting in a relationship. It's not you just giving to the man. It's, there's things that you're supposed to be getting in return. Okay, so let's move. Let's, let's, uh, how do I do this? Okay, there we go. So let's start by defining what dating is. Because like from judging my advice column, a lot of people don't understand it. A lot of young girls think, oh, if I go out with him or he calls me on the phone and we have a Zoom talk or he says he likes me, then I'm his girlfriend and we're, you know, we're a couple. No, no, you're not. You know, you just kicking it, talking to somebody, whatever this is a phrase, but you're not really an official, you know, dating couple. You just two people that just met each other or hung out a time or two or something. But anyway, this is what dating is. It's, it's like the beginning stage, you know, because there's like three stages of dating and I call it. But by the time you move into the third stage, you're, you know, def definitely courting with the end goal of marriage in mind. But the early dating phase, you know, you meet somebody and you know you want to be more than a friend, but you're not sure what yet. And so you start to do activities together with the, with the goal of kind of figuring out what this person's all about, right? What this person's all about and how you two suit each other. What do you have in common? Why are your morals and values in sync? What are your life goals in sync? Your history's in sync. You know, how, how you think about things. What's, what's in common there? This came from Wikipedia. I was good this time. I actually included the source. Usually I don't. Well, we're going to get to that. Hey, Shay, we're going to get to that in a minute. Uh, and I will be um, asking you guys to call in and share your stuff we got a lot of great responses oh thanks mo i just see that up there i sorry i had to run up the screen on um, i'm going to be asking you guys to call in at some point and uh you'll be able to uh share your thoughts on this whole dating thing or maybe share an experience um shay here you go here's the link so that you can hold on to oops you can hold on to it for the future in a little while, I need about 20 minutes, though, to kind of lay the foundation. So you guys, I will not be taking your calls in about 20 minutes from now, right? So that's dating, okay? That's the basics of when people, you know, decide that they trying to figure out if, who, if you are good for them, for them to stay with, be with, form a family with, move in with, get busy with, whatever, okay? Dating is also... Okay, because these are the parameters around which you must frame dating. It's not that serious. Okay, there's no timeline for how long you're going to date somebody before it get quote, serious. I, I personally propose that women consider six months being the maximum that you would, quote, date someone without moving to the next stage of, you know, this person is now courting you for the goal of marriage. If that's what you want. I mean, you know, some people don't want to get married. But let, let's just say that that is what you want. It does. It should have a timeline. But in general, when you first meet somebody, there's no like, okay, well, we've been we've been seeing each other for three weeks, so now we're gonna do you gonna get busy, and now we've been seeing each other for three months, so now we're gonna move. There's no timeline like that. It just you know it happens when it happens. So when you're dating somebody, you either don't know, right? You don't know what 
this person's going to end up meaning to you. And you can't confirm what the other person's intention is. I mean, you know, some people like women like to go and ask men, oh, you know, what is it that you're looking for? I always tell them, stop saying that. You basically give somebody a script to play you by doing that. You don't know what you want this person's looking for. I mean, just because what they're looking for in general don't mean they're looking for it with you. And if they know that you're looking for something serious, well, they, oh, guess what? Serious relationship coming right up because that's the easiest and most expeditious way into the pants. But see, we you don't do that. You just don't. You just let stuff unfold. And the main thing is when you're at this stage of dating, you should not be dating just one person. You should be dating three, a pair and a spare. I always have a video about that, too. OK, you, you're not committed to nobody. They're not committed to you. You be y'all be putting too much on it when you just barely know somebody. And then you gotta also factor, you know, you're gonna ask somebody, like I just said, you know, what's your intention? They don't even know yet. Cause they looking at you like, girl, please, I don't know your middle name yet. And you up there trying to lock me down into a committed relationship, leave me alone. And you know, it's just you gotta give people time to figure that out. They'll be like, Oh yeah, you know, she's pretty cool. Let's go to you know the next step. I'm gonna see her again. That's the next step. Or I'll still be seeing her. You know. So then they keep seeing you, right? And then pretty soon they start like dropping off all the extra people. Same on your end. And y'all just focusing on each other. But that's not something that you do right off the bat. A lot of women do that. Oh, you know, he's my boyfriend now. And they haven't had no kind of discussion and didn't get their face cracked. When the dude says, well, you know, we wasn't, we didn't have no relationship. What you talking about? Because they never had that conversation. The women just jumped to the conclusion. You got to make sure, you know, Sometimes some people just want to date around. They just want to date around. Real cool, real college casual. This one, that one, this one, that one. They're not trying to be committed to nobody. But if you're looking for true love and commitment and the happy ever after thing with the white picket fist and 2.5 children and the dog and stuff, then that's not a person that you would really want to invest too much time in. Like I said, six months max. And usually you find out way before then that they're not on your page. Um, they, You don't when you're dating somebody, you you might be dating them for a year or so if you would like to waste your time and they would never even meet your family or, you know, maybe it was some of your friends. You're not looking for their approval or involvement because you're just dating. And usually people not only have, you know, physical intimacy, but it's kind of expected. That's dating. All right. So what does it mean when you want to court someone? Hmm, that's really interesting, right? Because see, there's dating and then there's courting. And if you are a woman who's serious, then you want the man who's going to court you. Are men these days into it? I said six months max, honey, Lamore. I didn't say six months. Are you trying to get your calendar out and mark the day? I did not say that. I said max. And there's a lot of things that... In that would impact that, like the age of the people. Are you finishing up your university, your degree? You are still in college? Six months is not that long to wait. But if you're a mature woman with a job and your own mortgage and stuff, and you're in your 30s and you want to have a baby before you hit 40, six months is a long time. And most men in that age group know real quick, like within three months, if they want to be with you or not. But you, I said six months max, okay? I'm going to say that again. Six months max. OK, I did not say six months like it's written in stone. I have to keep saying this. People just don't, don't be listening. OK, now max. That means after six months, you if you get that long, it might not take you that long. You do sound and move on to the next one. OK, so let's talk about what courting is. Historically, you know, like in the 1800s and stuff. So remember Bridgerton, those of you who watch Bridgerton? That that was courting. You know, the guys would come to the house and they would meet the family. They would be invited to dinner. They would pay croquet and lawn tennis or whatever and badminton and all this old stuff. And it would be a lot, you know, like a big, it would be a group thing. So the girls were always under the watchful eye of somebody. There's not going to be no alone time. It's that she was just in the party where they could pop in at any moment. Um, they'd be, you know, listening at the door, they ear hustling. You're not going to be spending up all their daughter's time and you're not going to be having no kind of physical intimacies with her either. Because in that the, that culture, you know, environment is considered that it, you know, it um, lowered her value on the dating market. 
So they were very careful about their daughter's purity and, uh, you know, who had access to her, where she went, how she dressed, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, we don't have all those values anymore, but we're talking about uh, the principles of courting. So, you know, in the main, the key thing is, though, like unlike dating that I just talked to you about, courting has an end game. It has an expectation. There is a goal here that the guy clearly communicates, you know, I want to marry you. Okay. So everything that he's doing to be with you is with that goal in mind. He not, well, you know, let's just see where it goes. Let's just, you know, why we got to put a label on it. You know, you having babies with him, buying houses with him and all this stuff, and he still don't know what he wants, and you chase around doing something. See, no, 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 no. A lot of you just really just mess up your whole life by doing too much for a dude that you only dating, okay? Courting involves getting the family permission. It's very considered to be very old-fashioned now in the 20, the 2000s, but, you know, some dudes still do that. I mean, they go and they meet the family, and they say, you know, I would like to your fa- your permission to you know, date your daughter with the intention of marrying her. Remember that old thing that they used to say? They, they, um, you know, people make jokes about it now. They say like the daddy would see like the young man come to the house, right? Daddy pop his newspaper with his green glasses on, and then he look over his newspaper and say, "What are you, young man? What are your intentions with my daughter?" That's what that means. What are you? What's what's your goal here, son? Before I turn my daughter loose to you, I need to know what you're working with. What's where's your mind? And those were always good things. And it's really unfortunate that a lot more fathers don't take that approach. They can help save their daughters from so much nonsense and drama. Of course, you know, we got fathers that's not around. But, you know, there's other male family members that could step into that role and be checking these dudes. And so, you know, if a dude is courting you, he's not only spending time with you, but it's like outside of the bedroom, okay? That kind of time. You guys exchange gifts, you spend time around each other talking, getting to know each other, getting to know each other's families, getting to know each other's friends, and everything is very respectful. There's boundaries in place. The guy respects your time. He doesn't like take liberties with you physically, mentally, or emotionally, definitely not financially, definitely no sexual activity, none, none. Maybe like holding hand, a little kissing, something like that, but you know, other stuff does not happen. And, um, you know, some people feel like that's something that you should still adhere to. I'm like, I, like I said, I'm, I'm not going to tell people what to do, but I'm going to say this. If you are a woman who wants a serious man and you want marriage, that's something that you might want to consider at least putting off for a long time, you know, while you go through this, this courtship thing. Don't just like some of these young girls that write to the column, you know, they've been skating with a dude with for like three or four weeks and they already slept with him. You can't even know, you can't know nothing about a man in that length of time. What are you doing? I don't understand it. Then they say, well, you know, I don't know what we're doing here. I don't understand where this is going. But you done already slept with him. You did shit backwards, okay? Now, let's define courting, courting some more. I see how hard I worked on this. I was just so busy. I want you guys to understand the difference between, quote, dating and a man who's serious. So that if you are a serious woman, you can stop wasting your time. In almost every show, I talk about time. It's the one invaluable, irreplaceable resource that we have as human beings. We don't get our time back. So any time that you spend wasting on a relationship, wasting chasing some man, wasting chasing a dream that is never going to come to fruition, you get all the signs that maybe you need to change course, but you don't. Do it. Okay, so let's focus on courting. It's, it's, it's romance. Okay, he's paying attention to you in a different way. He's very attentive. He's there for you. He likes talking to you. He's affectionate with you. He likes getting you little gifts. He does special things for you. You don't have to ask him. Okay. This is this is when a man, when his heart is involved, he's gonna give to you like that with no holds barred because he doesn't. He's not holding back. He's not a tit for tat. Dude, if you have a dude who's measuring everything that he does for you and the only thing that he gives you freely is some bean, then you already know that that's a waste of time. I don't know what you're hanging around for thinking that you're going to get out of that situation. But like I said, if you are a woman who wants something serious, then you have got to let that go. If you're courting, both of you invest your time and effort and emotion 
in each other in the relationship as you develop trust. How can you be with a man, ladies? This happens a lot. You with a man and you say, "Well, I'm looking. I love him, but I don't trust him." How? Where they do that at? How does that happen? How do you love someone that you don't trust? I can't even talk to nobody that I don't trust. If I do, it's going to be the most BS conversation. Like, I could talk to a complete stranger the way I'm going to be talking to that person. That's about how much in-depth it's going to be, how much of myself I'm going to reveal to that person. I don't trust you. So I don't understand that. So, you know, in order to really court someone and really move towards that kind of commitment in marriage, you have to be open. You have to be risk. You have to risk being hurt. You have means you have to be vulnerable and you have to be real, which is you know authentic. It's risky. It's, it feels scary to a lot of people. But if you want to get the gold at the, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, that's what's going. To, that's what's going to require. If you have a man who's hiding from you, he won't tell you how he feels, or he but his words and his actions don't match up. That is a sign that he's on some BS and cut him loose. If you want something serious, like I said, I got to keep putting that in there because, you know, folks be misquoting me. If you don't care, right, you're just dealing with three or four dudes anyway, and you don't really care if he's serious or not, but then this doesn't apply to you. But, you know, a lot of women don't want that. They want to have a family. They want to have a husband. They want to have, you know, their little kids and all this other stuff. But I'm telling you, ladies, I'm trying to get you focused so that you stop wasting time. These boyfriend situations are a complete and total waste of your life. I just, we can't do that, okay? It's fine when you're a teenager, you know, you're 15, 16 years old. Ain't nobody looking to get married at that age. It's just it's fun, okay? It's all about fun. Even in your early 20s, it's all about fun. That's when that's when you have a, quote, boyfriend. You move past that to the point where you're ready to get married and have a husband and family and start building your, your empire and stuff. You don't have a boyfriend. You have a husband-to-be. You have a fiancé. You have a husband. Those are your things. That's just what you got. You don't have a boyfriend, okay? And you know, women 40, 50 years old talking about this is my boyfriend. Get the, have fun. You tripping. Okay, now if you're really courting someone, you both have mess, you have a clear idea of what kind of behaviors, language, actions are acceptable or not. With if you just date somebody, like you don't care where they are, you're not trying to catch up with them, you don't, you know, it's not really a big deal. You looking at joining your life with somebody, then what's acceptable and what is not is very important okay both of you should feel cherished and respected okay like you know special i see i made a typo there both of you should feel special to each other the woman would be able to relax thanks michelle michelle the woman you should be as a woman in a relationship right you should be able to relax you should be able to accept his gentlemanly behavior his protectiveness um you know his willingness to take the hit his his running interference with people that he thinks are going to try to hurt you or interfere in your life in some negative way. You know, you don't, well, I could do it myself and all that kind of stuff. That's, that's, no, you need to sit down and be quiet. You got more of a traditional aspect to it when a man is courting you. Some women might not really be ready for that. You know, it, it requires you to be able to relax and accept that you are not going to ask him out. You are not going to pay for a date. You're not going to drive him. You're not going to chase him. You're not going to call him all the time. You're not going to text him all the time. You're going to sit on your butt and let him be the man. That's what you're going to do. That is a man who is courting you because he's willing to step up to the, do all those things. The men who complain about it, well, you know, she don't never call me. I just have to call her. He's not courting you. And he's a buster. Get rid of him. He don't even know what he's supposed to be doing. It's unfortunate a lot of these young men don't have dads to teach them this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Teach them how they're supposed to treat women, how they're supposed to be in a relationship. They don't know. So they go on by what they see on, you know, on on YouTube, on these crazy five-letter word groups and stuff. They that's that's who's teaching them how to be in relationships, and they're failing miserably. I don't understand why they don't you know drop those habits because it's not getting them what they claim they want, which is love. It's not gonna get them that chasing around listening to some fools. And most of them dudes are married anyway. I got some long-term girlfriend in the cut. They just keep it under wraps because they're trying to get this money, right? They stir up all this this nonsense and these little little dummies be falling behind them and giving them money. Such pimp game. Okay. And then the last two things is that, you know, your your relationship is in the public. It's not as, oh, why don't you come over? Netflix and chill kind of stuff. Come over. That's not a part of courting. I mean, you could do that, you know, far later down the line. 
but the first part is public. There's friends and family around. You know, there's just people around while you and this dude get to know each other. You can go on your little dates and whatever like that, but still, you go on your dates, it's in public, right? And the relationship is not forced. So you ladies who want to chase a dude down, talking about, well, you know, I, I called him because, you know, he didn't call me. Or we had our first date and then he never called me. So is it okay for me to call him? Is it okay for me to text him? No, it's not. Sit your butt down. If he didn't call you or text you, that means he's not interested in courting you. Let it go. That's what that means. Okay, stop being so damn thirsty. It's just ridiculous. You chasing after a man. Don't you understand, ladies, if you got to chase him from the beginning, you're going to be chasing that man the rest of the time that he decides to waste with you. That's all he's going to be doing is wasting your time. But, you know, you, you're doing too much. Sit down, wait on him to do what he's supposed to do as the man. That is really, you know, and I know, you know I'm, a, I'm a staunch feminist as far as a whole bunch of other stuff goes. But when it comes to this interpersonal relationship stuff, I believe in sitting down and letting the man do what he needs to do. We can work out all that other stuff later. I will never chase a man. I will never call a man. I'm never going to pay on a date. It's not going to happen. So if you want to be with me, you got to step into the man pants and wear them proudly. Other than that, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Let's talk about what is a boyfriend. It's a screenshot. Where did I get this from? I don't know. Somewhere online. This little screenshot of boyfriend is a male companion or a friend with one who with whom one has intimacy or romance right it could be a male friend as in a boyfriend you know space between the boy and the friend boyfriend at versus a girlfriend or a male partner in a romantic relationship okay so that's a boyfriend now let's talk about this. oh Oh, I was traumatized. <laughs> you know, the reality, and we'll be talking about this more as I go over the poll results. We did a poll and, um, you know, women responded with their thoughts on boyfriends. And I'll be giving, I'll be talking about that in a minute. Well, a little bit later. I don't know, I have seven questions. Yeah, I printed out the responses. Um, I went on Urban, <laughs> that was a mistake. I went on Urban Dictionary, right? Because I wanted to see what, you know, this is young people that, you know, they tend to be like the Gen Zs and, you know, these new people, these young folks. And they put their little definitions in there. So I wanted to see what they thought, right? What do they think is a boyfriend? And so these are some of the responses. And I want you to notice, note, please, pay attention to how romantic, how fairy tale-ish, how... Disneyland, how emotionally hungry these young women are for love. It's just mind boggling. We got to do better as parents and elders to teach these young girls that they can be full on their own. This, the overwhelming feeling of this is like this hunger, right? A boy who makes you feel that he can give you the stars. A boy you believe only sees you. Someone who you would do anything for. Someone you believe would do anything for you and would never hurt you. The one person who can make you feel beautiful. A person who can also make you feel insecure. Someone who makes you feel a surge of electricity every oops, every time you touch. I had two men in my life that had me feeling that surge of electricity. You know what I did? I ran away from them like Flo Show. Uh-uh. <laughs> You ain't doing that to me. We're not getting in that. Isn't this? I know Ravania. Ravania <laughs> say Lord, <laughs> but it's this is this is this is where our young girls are now. In comparison, I got a a note from this young boy. He says, um, "You know, I think I'm gonna break up with my girlfriend." So and I'm like, "Why?" And he said, "This is on Quora." And, you know, I do answers over there too. He's like, the, uh, you know, I want to break up with her. And he said, because she won't give me oral. I'm like, oh, so that's all that the girlfriend is to you. So, <laughs> you see what I mean? You see the difference here? In his mind, that was what a girlfriend was for, just to basically satisfy his base needs. Whereas the girls are looking at, you know, pie in the sky, fairy tales, butterflies, roses, and bumblebees. It's just really interesting. 
And so this, another girl says, you know, a male that is close to your heart, he is the one you can't stand to go a day without seeing. He provides everything you need, including intimacy, love, protection, comfort, and an escape from the world. No matter what, you can go to him with your problems, and he will make your bad days happy and full of love. <sighs> you know, I've been dating for 40 years off and on. I've never had a boyfriend like that. <laughs> you know, it, men aren't that picture perfect. I mean, you know, everything that you need, that that's never going to happen. That That's an unrealistic expectation. Men are human too, and they're going to have holes in they in their game, just like anybody else. That means he's going to give it to you sometimes. He might give it to you most of the time, but not everything and not all the time. And, you know, all the stuff, no matter what, you can go to with your problems. You know, I mean, huh? Huh? Sam, Samantha, you the only one. <laughs> Samantha, you over there on an the island all by your little self. Okay. And this girl says, a boy who is caring, kind, sweet, and loving to a girl does everything he can to make her happy and loves her with all of his heart, treats her with respect and forgiveness, doesn't let the little things get in his way of caring for this girl, is loyal and tells her he loves her each day, does not think of other girls the same way he thinks of her, looks at her like she's on top of the world every second of the day. Looks are a bonus. I want you guys to understand this. I mean, this is on the internet, okay? And not only is it on the internet, you just think about the letters that have come through our advice column over the last, those of you, some of you have been born with me for four or five years. And you know, you think of the patterns. The girls have a different expectation and desire from their relationship, whereas the boys are just looking at the convenience of it all. And you know what I'm talking about. All right, let's see what else I have over here. A fleeting paradox in which deference is made to a single man for the reason of supposed affection and loyalty, neither of which generally hold up in said relationship, which ironically excludes anyone in the friend zone. One who confides in and trusts. In many instances, the guy is number one, a man whore who flirts with anything that moves. Number two, a complete jerk. Number three, a big duck. Number four, a beater, or number five, a pedo. Okay, she was <laughs> she was on one. She was like, look, let me just tell you the real. And then the final girl says they are a source for cash and intimacy when we don't want to look like garden tools. And that pretty much kind of sums it up. Because when you think about it, in my from my perspective, you know, what else a boyfriend's good for? If he's not on the end where he's courting you for, you know, for marriage for the long term, then that is what all he's with good for and a lot of them don't even want to give y'all no money and y'all giving him money paying his bills letting him move in with you and not pay nothing let him get away with not doing his fair share his chores you wasting your money buying property with him and then he decided he don't want to work so you don't want to lose the house so you pay the mortgage i mean you just be doing too much doing too much for these men now i want to show you something let me see how do i do this because this is a uh, um Got to share the screen. Uh, hold on, y'all. Give me a second here. Trying to figure this out. Can you see this? Probably not. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I figured it out finally.
Here we go. This one. This is what I want to show you. Okay, so hopefully you saw that. You cannot. Oh, did it not show? Dang it. All right, hold on a second. Let me try one more time. Dang it. I thought I was doing something and all y'all, <laughs> nobody was seeing anything but me. Okay, let me see here. Okay, share, Chrome tab. Okay, here we go. Here, if you are dealing with a married man or a man inside of any kind of a relationship of any sorts, you're a terrible woman. You're a terrible woman, and you are the reason why men are allowed or men get away with the ridiculous behavior that they get away with. You are an enabler, and um, yeah, people like you literally don't deserve to have any happiness whatsoever. So, if that's you, just know. You're a horrible person, horrible, inside and out, period. Okay, now I guess everybody saw it that time, okay? Because I, I saw it on the screen, so I finally figured out how to do it. But um, I thought that was real interesting. I came across that today, and I said, there, <laughs> shut up, A.B. I saw that, and I was like, this poor girl is so confused. She is so confused. She with her attitude towards this, you know, like in a committed relationship. Okay, you know, that's not um, your, that's not your man. I mean, you know, just because you dating him, that does not mean that he's, um, <laughs> exactly, Indigo, that was my thing. It's like, why would you blame her? It's like you talking about, you know, he's in a committed relationship with Mary. What, did he forget? Did he forget? He's the one that you in the relationship with. Did he forget about you? So you want to just skip over that part and you want to start blaming somebody else talking about a girl code. It's ain't nobody's job to police your man, your boyfriend. It's nobody's job to keep him on the choke chain and lock and key, but you. And if you know, and she talking about somebody who's being, um, you know, quote, allowing the man to, you know, that's the reason why they act like this and get away with it and all stuff. No, the reason they get away with it and act continue to act that way is because the women that they're with let it happen. Most of the time, even when the woman finds out that the dude is cheated, what does she do? We hear it in the column all the time. She stays. Well, we're going to work it out. We're going to go to counseling. This and that. So dude is just looking at her like, oh, is that what we're going to do? And so this is keep in mind this is a boyfriend okay this is not a husband this ain't nobody you legally tied to got community property with nothing this is just some clown you dating and you want to sit up there and talk about you know well that's my man and go through all them changes about somebody oh honey i would leave him so fast i would be like road runner beep beep boop out but you know the way she's saying that because and i wanted to emphasize this ladies this boyfriend stuff you don't fight over a boyfriend if he want to go, y'all, you know, you dating or whatever, y'all a, a couple. That's words. What is he? What is his actions doing? His actions are showing that he wants to be single. So that's when you humble, humble, and you just let him do that, right? Because that's what he's doing. That's his behavior. I don't care what he says about us loving you and all this stuff. What he's doing, what he's showing you by his actions, is that he doesn't. So why would you hang on to some fucking words instead of paying attention to what he's doing? Okay, which is breaking your heart and dogging you out and exposing you to diseases. Some of them come in there with a side baby. All kind of trash be going on. And you're going to be trying to blame the other woman for that? No, look at your dude. Okay, you got a trash dude. That's your responsibility to handle that. Okay, it's no other woman's 
job to babysit, coerce, uh, chain, rope in, or, or contain your man. Okay, because it wasn't like he was in an accident. He went and got his butt in his car, drove over there smelling all good, pulled off all his clothes, and did everything he wanted to do of his own volition. Okay, nobody tied him down and made him do it. He chose to do that. And I think that's the part that's really so hard for women like her in that video to accept because for them to accept that he chose to do that and he chose to dog them out and he chose to hurt them is too much for them to handle. So they, you know, the way that they can, they want to, they don't want to feel, feel like they have to make a choice in the relationship and, you know, move on to someone else. So they would rather blame her so they can keep stay with that man. That's what that's all about. So again, this is a boyfriend. Okay. <laughs> Why? It's what you supposed to be, figure it out. Look at this. See, you supposed to have trust. If you can't trust them, what are you doing? Why are you there? And stop getting on TikTok and making yourself look stupid and desperate like that. That was just so embarrassing to see. But that's why I wanted to show it to y'all, though, because it was just a bit much for me. All right. So let's move on to the next slide. You know, because it's just like, you know, you don't really know what kind of lies the dude is told. And plus, like I said, in my way of thinking, if you're not married or, you know, this at this third level stage where y'all is engaged and courting and all this, you know, the, all that stuff, then you're single. I don't care about how you live together. I don't care about how many babies you done had with them. I don't care about, you know, you've been dating for 20, 27 years. I don't care. He's still single and so are you. So, you know, cheating becomes a gray area in my mind. Cheating on what? You're not married. You're either single or married. You're pregnant or not. Okay? There's just certain things that is like very definitive in my mind. And you, you know, the women who like to mix stuff up, it's like these things, you know, they want to, the slide, previous slide, let me see here. Um, all this stuff, he's loyal and tells her he loves and all that stuff. Those are expectations of a husband. Personally, I think it's inappropriate to expect that of a mere boyfriend. I mean, it's nice if you get it, but you shouldn't expect it. If he's not coming in the door, you know, talking about that's he wants something serious with you and showing you by the way he behaves towards you and your parents and any kids you may have and any of that kind of stuff, then he's just a buster. He's just talking smack. Okay? He ain't doing shit. He's just talking. So, um, yeah, this lady I put in red, that pretty much sums it up. That's, in essence, what a boyfriend is, okay? Nothing. You don't even have to sue the husband. You just do out. I mean, you know, why would you waste more time trying to do that? See, this, again, time. The time that you spend going through all them changes and dragging all the stuff and paying all them attorney fees and stuff, it's just wasting your time and money. You already know to do the trash. Why are you going to be tripping? Just deuce out, cut ties, just end it, move on. You know, all that kind of stuff there is you means you haven't let go yet. You still want to hang on and fight with them and stuff. So see, the, the thing that when a woman has complete apathy, she don't give a damn about a man, then you know it's really over. If you're still willing to argue and fuss and fight with them and go through a whole bunch of changes, you're not finished with them yet. You still have too many emotions. If you were really done with them, you're not going to fight with them. You're just going to be like, oh, okay, is that what we're doing? Okay, and then you're going to pack your stuff and deuce out. You're not going to give him more time and more energy. You're not going to do that. Okay, now let's talk about these. I have them in order here. Hold on a second. Let me find them. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, okay. Here we go. Question number one. Question number one on the survey. Question number one was, what is it that you think women expect to get from a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship? You guys really came through. People would put some uh, really good answers. The number one answer overwhelmingly was companionship. Companionship. And then came things like loyalty, love, affection, empathy, a shoulder to cry on, some financial support, um, exclusivity, um, yeah, you know, some people said it was a preparation for marriage, you know, commitment. Yeah, I disagree with that. Someone, a helpmate to help do, do things. Um, someone wrote, warning, English is not my first language. 
love, a more comfortable life, good eggplant, recognition, companionship, support, care, sharing of life burdens, a safety net, because being alone can be scary and can be frowned upon where I live. Oh, and I don't know, I didn't ask those kind of demographics for the survey on this side. Um, yeah, companionship, that, that was the overwhelming um, thing. Now, someone here wrote validation. I think she's right. A lot of women look to have a boyfriend. Like I said, those that don't have one feel like there's something wrong with them. There's something missing in their life. They are seeking validation. So she's right. But yeah, overwhelmingly, um, people are talking about companionship, you know, emotional support, um, you know, some decent eggplant, love, understanding, that kind of stuff. Okay, but is that really okay that's what women expect but is that really what they're getting is that what they're getting if that's what they're getting then why are there so many messed up dating relationships if that's what women are getting then why are so many there's so many breakups to me it's like well that you know your expectations versus what you're really getting are not matching up it's not matching okay so then we move on to question number two. I think I asked six or seven questions all together. It wasn't a very long survey, but it did kind of give you the opportunity to explore your feelings and belief systems about dating and relationships in this, you know, boyfriend term. What does that mean? Okay. So number two is what do you feel is the significance of having quote a boyfriend? Okay. Let's look at some of these answers. Some of them, she say nothing unless it's leading to marriage. Mm -hmm. None, none, not much really. None, nothing. Boyfriends are mostly for fun and testing the waters or what being with them long term might look like. Mm. It's a situation where I can have fun, be desired, get some eggplant and also a little companionship for a while. I don't put too much on it like I used to. To me, a boyfriend is your significant other that you're committed to outside of marriage. If he's a boyfriend, then that means you're exclusive and monogamous. He's not just someone that you're dating. Hmm. That's a fiance in my book. That's not a boyfriend. Um, a boyfriend allows you to really get to know someone before making a commitment. Hmm. It means that you have been chosen by a male. That's the validation thing. To do masculine things that I don't want to do. Girl, please. Half these clouds can't fix nothing. They don't know how to do nothing. They can't. No, that's a fantasy. They can't even change a tire. They don't know nothing. You better have AAA. None. None seems to be a lot. None. None. I honestly don't even know anymore, she says. This is this, these are answers to this question that's up here on the screen. I don't really know anymore, she says. There's none. It's rare to come across a man that is a protector and a provider that's committed and shows love and support. But if a woman does come across this type of man, these things would benefit her life in a healthy relationship. I agree. That's true. To lead to marriage. Hmm. I feel it's a step before marriage. I think it's significant in that it provides you with emotional and sometimes financial support. Also, affection and attention. In this society, romantic relationships are given priority. So many things are said to be a mate's or partner's responsibility. There are limits to what friends are expected to do. Boyfriends are that intermediate gap. Not a husband, but still expected to provide masculine benefits. So being without one can make you feel lonely, unloved, and without sufficient emotional support. Interesting. How many men are really good at providing emotional support, though? Women complain about that all the time. He doesn't listen to me. You know, he shuts me down. He talks over me. He gets frustrated when I try to explore my feelings and when I cry. He doesn't want me to do it. He doesn't want to hear it. I mean, again, I think a lot of this is, you know, women's fantasy expectations about a dating relationship, not the reality. The reality is coming up against what your fantasy expectations are and who knows where you got those ideas from. 
That's why I wanted to bring this to your attention. It's going to make, when you leave here, I mean, I'm, some of this might be funny and all this kind of stuff. But when you finish listening to this show, the, the, the idea is going to be that you have to go away and think about your expectations and where you got these from and how many of them have turned out to be realistic in today's dating market. What might you do to mitigate any kind of future wastes of time? That's our goal to for today, okay? Because personally, I'm going to just tell you straight up, I think having a, quote, boyfriend is a waste of time. They ain't about nothing. I just, if if he's serious, then he's going to be your fiance. He's going to make that known. He's going to put that ring on it, as they say. If he just dipping around and complaining and wanting you to share rent and bills and all this kind of stuff, you're a mere convenience for him. You fitting up there putting your heart and stuff in and he just looking at the fact that you helping him out financially and giving him some free ass. That's what you're doing as the quote girlfriend. Ain't you ain't there no benefit there for you. And all this to be talking about companionship. You can get that from a, from your female friends, from your relatives. Some of my best companions are my brothers. I've always had good male friends. My friend Ken, who's been on the show a lot. Okay. You don't have to have a boyfriend like a romantic partner where you sexing them in order to get this kind of benefit that you all perceive that you get from men. It seems like a lot of it is just unrealistic. Like, you know, social acceptance, being deemed as worthy enough to be chosen as a boyfriend. And here it says none. It's a lie. Society has taught women that they are supposed to have one. I agree. You want someone who cares about your well-being and cares about making your life easier. That's something that you can love. Having someone that respects you is always going to be an important aspect. You want someone who's going to treat you well and who's going to come defend you if someone says bad things about you. Hmm. Again, unrealistic. Unless it's a man who's doing it. You, you talking about some bitch shit? That's your job. Okay, you don't involve your man in that. You don't do that. You don't involve your man in stuff that you should be handling with some other broad. Open your mouth and handle your business. That Don't put your boyfriend in that. That's not, He's there to do stuff with other dudes, not with some women. If you can't handle some other woman, then you need to go, I don't know what to do, tell you about yourself. And see if somebody says mostly the social benefits of having people's approval, not a damn thing, no significance in my opinion, nothing, nothing at all. When I was younger, I thought it was the first step to marriage. Now in my late 30s, I don't think a boyfriend has any significance. For me, it has no significance. But for many women, it's a badge of honor. Ooh. For many women, it represents being chosen. Being a young millennial, I have to say, no significance. LOL. Hmm. Okay, so that's question number two. Um, Does anyone have anything they would like to add to the show? If you do, if you want to call in and share your thoughts on what I've covered so far about boyfriends and courting, um, who's going to tell us say face cracked? <laughs> if you uh, have something that you want to share, that's the link right there. This is it's under my you know my name, Dexterism. You put it one more time. Oops. There we go. That is the link. You put your headphones on or you know, talk on your phone. You click that and I'll take your call here on the show to get, um, you know, you can make your comments on the air and I'll start taking comments now. Okay. I'm probably about halfway through. So let's move on to slide number three and you guys can call in anytime you want to. Okay, what are the benefits that a woman actually receives? Okay, not your perception of what you want to receive. What do you actually get when you have a, quote, boyfriend? And how does what you re- what you get go against your expectations? Okay, so that we move on. This is getting, this is getting to the good part. Here we go, question number three. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting strong. You know what I've been doing, the host? Okay, I tried this a couple of weeks ago, and I was scaring myself. I tried singing, but that seems to be what's, you know, slowly getting my voice back to where it should be. It sounds awful. I'm not hitting my high notes like I used to. I kind of sing like a, 
Remember, uh, what's her name? Patty Austin. That that song that she used to sing with James Ingram. Me and my brother would sing that at karaoke all the time, and it was that was that's my that's my voice tone, the way that she sings. But um, that was not happening. <laughs> So let's talk about this question number three. What are the benefits a woman actually receives when she has a boyfriend and how does what she actually receives go against her expectations? Okay, nothing. A boyfriend is just a friend with benefits. He just milking the cow through the fence. Damn, through the fence. Until the real woman he wants to marry comes along. Girlfriend status is just being a placeholder or a bench warmer. Ooh, she just looks like nyeh, 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 <laughs> with her little knife. Depends on the boyfriend. It could be money or gifts or something to do with you, but most likely it's just to receive some time. So this one says just someone to pay for and take care of. Oh, that's not good. None. None. The benefits are the lessons that you learn, if that. As for the second part of your question, Hoping is usually a waste of time. I agree. Hmm. We have a fantasy given to us, and sometimes we believe in a boyfriend relationship. This will leave you heartbroken. Women give their all without any commitment. That's true. You have all these expectations of a, quote, boyfriend. I keep telling you, when you're with a, quote, boyfriend, you're still single. It's inappropriate for you to be having all these husbandly you know, ideas put on him. And just like he might have some wifely ones on you because, you know, they want to be talking about, well, you need to submit and, you know, cook and clean and do us. No, 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 no. I am not your wife. I'm not your maid. I'm not your mama. Okay. I'm not doing none of that. I'm here strictly for the good time. That became my mantra after my husband died. That, that I mean, I, I had that on repeat that I was just telling dudes, I'm not trying to do all that. I mean, if I invite you over for a meal here and there, I mean, you'd be happy. I'm a great cook. But just for you to walk in the door thinking about I'm thinking that that's going to be my role. I'm going to be feeding your hungry ass all the time. Hungry, hungry hippo. Get out of here. And you ain't buying no groceries. And Deb likes to eat expensive food. I'd be looking at my grocery bill. I'm spending like a hundred and something dollars a week. just, And I'm feeding myself. Okay. I can't imagine what I would spend if I had to feed two or three people. My grocery bill would be through the roof. But yeah, I like organic stuff. And you know, free range organic pasture raised and all this kind of stuff. I buy that kind of stuff. I'm not trying to eat all them chem unnecessary chemicals. I already jacked up enough. Girl, yeah, they be trying to talk about what you cooking. Why is that in your business? Well, you don't have to be like that. I was just wondering. Well, you going to wonder what's at McDonald's. Why don't you do that? Because that's where you're going to eat. They ain't going to be over here. And they be like all put out. I'm feeding you. <laughs> Okay, let me get back to question number three. Companionship, intimacy, getting to be treated like a woman. That means being treated special, delicate, and desired. Doors open, gifts, dinners, and outings paid for by him. What mucks it up for most men is men's demands, their egos, their insecurities, and how they at some point start trying to control you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh. Let me... Uh, I got my headphones here, so anybody want to click that link and call in, you click the link and I'll put you on the show, okay? You share your thoughts or your own personal experiences with anything that we're talking about on the show today, this whole boyfriend concept, okay? Like if you change your mind about a boyfriend, well, what happened? I'd be interested in hearing that story. Uh, there are no benefits in the black community, this one, this poll taker writes. She stays losing and getting the short end of the stick. Wow. This one says it depends on the standards that you have for him and what you as a couple have agreed that your relationship is. If you've agreed to companionship, love, loyalty, support, and eggplant, for example, then that's what you'll expect from your boyfriend. If he goes against those expectations, then that's a problem. Hmm. Headaches. People are supposed to add value to your life, not take from it. A lot of men turn out to not be the decent people to their significant others they portray themselves to be. She says taking care of a man child and his children or family usually. Yeah, I ain't taking care of nobody. I have to be frank. When I had boyfriends, I didn't see any benefits. Just being from my personal experience, 
I really can't answer this question. Yeah, well, a lot of people would say that no benefit. I'm not sure how to answer this. You know, now that I'm in my 40s, I really don't see any benefits other than having somebody to talk to and spend time with and lift heavy things. Wow. I received no benefits and no real meaningful and equal companionship. Instead, it gets you get an overgrown toddler. Expectations reside on a different planet to the planet of what she receives, just completely diametrically opposed. Schizophrenia is the best description of this situation. Wow. The only benefit is casual eggplant, occasional gifts, trips, and money. These things are not guaranteed. Wow. If she's not delusional about what a boyfriend really is, which is not a pseudo-husband, and not trying to restrict someone of their free will by being jealous, possessive, and demanding, having a false sense of entitlement and ownership over someone that is just supposed to be a friend, then she will get the benefit just like any other friendship that she has in her life if she treats it like a genuine friendship. The problem is the codependency slash emotional attachment after eggplant happens and feeling or believing that this person should only be with you forever and to be expected to be treated as a wife without the marriage license. It's delusional on both parts because a boyfriend or girlfriend does not belong to you and is under no contract. People are out here playing house and it's a waste of time. Tell it, girl. Having a boyfriend is draining because they expect too much for you. No reason. Exactly. Not sure because most guys aren't boyfriend material anyway. And somebody just wrote child and with the face palm, you know, face palm little emoji. <laughs> a false sense of having someone who is committed, even though technically is legally acknowledged yet. I think she means not legally acknowledged. Generally, men just want eggplant. Period. If eggplant is part of the relationship, it can blind a woman into not realizing a man doesn't share her goals and sometimes delay the end goal of it, completely derailing it altogether. Wow. Social acceptance. A woman can brag about having a man and being in a relationship, whether the relationship is actually toxic or not. Wow. Usually falls below expectations. All she gets is a tear-filled pillow and a broken heart. Well, there you go. That's I'll, There's a lot more, but I'll end at that. This is something we might discuss on the wall because there's a lot more. People put a lot more on those things. So let's move on. Anybody got a comment you want to make? Got a comment? There you go. That's the link. Click it and call in, please. Love to hear your voices and your comments live on the show. Um. You know, so I'm sure some of you probably didn't get a chance to respond to the survey, but I still like to hear what you have to think or what your experiences are with this quote boyfriend stuff. I can tell you personally, yeah, I I didn't really put too much on it. Other when I was, you know, a little teenager, you know, you did, but after that, you know, people be like, Oh, you know, don't you wanna you know, they wanna refer to them as your boyfriend. I'm like, You ain't my boyfriend. And they're like, well, you know, but we seeing each other. I'm like, yeah, but I'm seeing two other people too. I'm not just seeing you. I'm not committed to none of y'all. So you ain't my man. I'm not your woman and I'm not your girlfriend. And they just be sitting there looking at you like, well, don't you want that? No, I don't. If I wanted that, I would have told you that from the outset. I like being single. I'm not trying to be, I mean, you know what I wanted? I was single with to tell you the truth, like I said, just told you, I really wasn't feeling getting married in the first place. I did because, well, it just seemed like a good idea at the time. And it wasn't bad. Don't get me wrong. He was, you know, he was a good guy. But since then, notice how single I have been. I'm not trying to get married. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you do. You ain't moving in with me. I'm not moving in with you. We're not having that kind of situation. I'm not going to answer to you about nothing. Um, you ain't telling me nothing. You ain't going to tell me what to do. I'm not submitting. Nothing, nothing, none of that. None of that's happening. I don't care. And when I was still young enough to do all that, you know, people were like, well, I don't have no kids. What you telling me for? You think I'm going to be breeding for you? Fucked out of here with that. I'm not having that. I'm not having no kids with you. Well, you know, this and that. I'm like, go and make that happen elsewhere. I'm not gonna. My feelings not gonna be hurt because it's like I'm not in, like in love with you or nothing anyway. I mean, I like you, okay, but 
I didn't like somebody else. And they just could not get over the way I was just like, I don't know. And I know you guys probably thinking, oh my gosh, this is, how could she be like that? If this is me, okay, I just don't care. I don't care. It's not like I'm gonna go out of my way to hurt them, but I had in my mind and I was very, Leo's, I'm telling you, once we tell you that we, this is the way it is, that's the way you can go to your grave and know that that's how it's gonna be. We do not change our mind. And if I tell a dude straight up, you know, I'm not trying to be in a relationship with you or nobody else, that's what the fuck I meant. I'm not trying to be in a relationship with you. And it doesn't matter what you do, what you buy me, where you take me, what kind of words you say, how many flowers you give, nothing, it don't matter. I'm not trying to be committed to you or anybody else. That's what I meant. And I have been single all this time. I mean, I go out with people, you know, this and that, but I'm not trying to be like to where I have to feel obligated to do something or not do something because of what he might feel or think or want or something. I don't give a shit. I do what I want to do. And the way to do that is to stay single. Be single. And I don't see any, you know, advantage to not being single. Maybe more money. Two incomes is probably not a bad idea, but judging by the advice columns, that ain't what women get anyway. Until they get like an albatross around their neck and somebody draining their money. Remember the girl whose boyfriend used to go in her drawer and take her money? It was just quarters and stuff for her laundry, but you know, that adds up. You know what $60 or $100 worth of quarters looks like? And you dig in there and take pockets full of somebody's change? That could be $30. And he doing this every week? No. Nah. <laughs> Even these days, just driving your car and not refilling, putting the gas back in your your tank, that's $60 and $70, $80 right there. Nah, you ain't driving my car either. Take the bus. AC Transit, <laughs> good schedules and they go everywhere. Yes, thanks, Shay. All right, let me move on to question number four. Let's move on to question number four of our survey. This is what we're talking about. We had a survey that was connected with the show. People respond to it. The survey closed earlier today, I think around 11 or noon or something. And I'm talking, I'm sharing some of the results. And it was all fill in the blanks. It was none of no multiple choice. So everything, I have to kind of read you some, some um, choice comments that the ladies made in response to the many questions. There's like seven questions altogether. We're on question number four. When a woman has no boyfriend, why do so many women feel that they are nothing because they are not part of a couple? So let's see what some of these say. Because internet bullies and nosy family bullies make it seem like something's wrong with you if you don't have one. Hmm. Because black women need validation that someone loves them. Wow. Women have been conditioned to believe that having a man validates their worth. Well, having a man really brings more work and stuff you realize isn't as valuable once you've found peace and joy in your singleness. Ooh, honey, yes. Societal conditioning. Society has repeatedly told women if they are not attached to a man that there's something wrong with them. Yep. Oh, my God. That's so true. Because we are fed the crap that from the older generation that you can't move a muscle without a man in your life. Well, somebody tell me that? I know I'm old and I nobody ever told me that. So, I don't know. I'm not saying that people don't. I'm just saying it. I haven't heard that one. Because those who sing the That's Why You Are Single song have low self-esteem and get their validation through having a man. Those same women will tell you that peace, that a piece of a man is better than no man. They will take any bum off the street who has nothing to offer just to say they have a man. That's true. Deep loneliness, low self-esteem, the failure of society and media to teach and model self-value and self-love. Hmm. Society puts more value on shackled women than single ones. That's understandable because most men are useless by themselves and they benefit from the propaganda. I think a woman by herself thrives. Her talents can benefit the community and society as a whole, while a man is completely lost and incapable of surviving by himself. Men are parasites and time leeches. Ooh, she went like in. <laughs> I'm loving this comment. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> I don't know why this is so funny. Time leeches. I have to use that one. So they desperately need women and women's attention to function on a basic level. Brainwashing from childhood. Thank you, Walt Disney. Not being made fully aware of the real deprived nature of men and low self-esteem maintained by advertising. There's always something wrong with us. Lines, gray hair, cellulite, etc. Made me the perfect pick Misha for a long time. Single life has always been portrayed as harder and my family was encouraged to stay miserable. But at least you had a man. Wow. 
That was a great comment. We have been brainwashed to think so. Some of us are still impacted by the effects of patriarchy. It isn't so long ago, back in the 70s, 60s and 70s, that it wasn't value, viable for the vast majority of women to earn their own living and live independently. We lived under patriarchy for so long, it is probably still in our individual and collective psyche to need a man. Hmm. Interesting. A lot of women lack self-love and self-esteem. That is so true. I don't know. It's like an epidemic. Like I always said, if it was a disease tracked by the CDC, it would be like an epidemic outbreak kind of proportions. Women are conditioned to feel this way and feel shame because patri patriarchy set it up that way because men are expendable and they know it. So they want to make women feel bad about not needing them. That's very true. It is propaganda making us believe that women can't live without males in their life when actually women thrive better when they are single as opposed to being held back and oppressed in intimate relationships with men. They have been using psychological tactics on both genders to make sure women feel shame and disrespect if they are not owned and attached to a male. Ultimately, it is the main goal of removing women's power to make the males feel better about themselves. Yep. They feed on us. They feed on our feminine energy. So this lie was created centuries ago and to remove the woman from her true throne. Religion pays a big part in this brainwashing, demonizing all the women characters and lying on Lilith, the so-called Adam's first wife story, so that it mentally enslaves women to keep her in a low vibrational frequency, like the males are usually low vibrational. It makes it easier for them to prey on us. Okay, let me curl, let me... <laughs> That is like the comment of the century right there. She went in, touched on religion, touched on history, touched on politics, and all of that come together to make it. What's up, Cream? What's up, Ocean? Yeah, this is unbelievable. I haven't noticed because I don't care what any of these people think. Also, most black women are single if they don't know it, so I don't meet too many that judge. Well, that's true. But like I said, if you ain't married, then you're single anyway. It's just a lot of women don't want to, you know, acknowledge that because they want to argue you down. Well, you know, but we a couple. But, you know, we do everything that married people do. Or they have this new, well, it's not new anymore. The term that came out in the 90s, wifey. Remember that song? That group next said, you and my wifey song. And everybody was singing that song. And everybody, be, you know, that's my, you know, that's my wifey. And so men could just pretend like they was married and get everything out of a woman, the best out of her, without ever walking that down to that justice of the peace or signing that license. So they didn't have no legal obligation to these women that they was busy calling a little wifey, but she busting her behind to, cause she feel like she got the title. You know, she that's hearing the wife part and just forgetting about the why at the end. And so she just doing the absolute most to keep up with this title of wifey. I'm like. Oh, I wish somebody would call me that so I could bust him in his jaw. He talks to me all kind of crazy. Society judges single women for not being chosen by a man. Okay, so that's the overriding theme. I think, you know, there's again, there's a lot more, but um, I kind of skipped through some of them and read you the ones that I thought were interesting. So now we move on to question number five. Now, this packet is pretty thick. Does this mean that people wrote long responses? What does this mean? Hold on a second. Let me see what's going on here. Oh, no. Because it's five and six stapled together, Deborah. There we go. That's why it's so thick. All right. I fixed it. So question number five on our poll about this show that we did so we could get everyone's thoughts. What is... What to you is the difference between dating and courting? Now, earlier in the show, if you missed it, you'll have to go back and look at the slides. I discussed what courting is and the definition of courting and dating so that you could see the differences set out there. Okay. Um, but that's, you know, you missed it. I'm not going to put, put it back up there. So what to you is the difference between dating and courting? This person says nothing. This one says women get used by men during dating. Courtship has a goal, a purpose, a time frame with the expectation that it leads to marriage. Exactly. Dating is something you do to pass the time, not necessarily with the goal of anything. Courting is deliberate and it's clear from the beginning that the situation is moving towards marriage. Exactly. So it's good. It's kind of refreshing for me to see so many women get it. Courting is when a man is looking to make a woman his wife 
whereas dating is looser with no defined attention. Dating is simply spending time with someone to get to know them. Courting is dating with intention. Dating is casually meeting people without a commitment. Courting is an actual relationship. This one says, I think they are the same, but courting appears to be more of a formal way of making it known that they are serious about intention. Mm, I don't think they're the same at all. Courting is working on a marriage in the future. Dating is just going out for dinner, dancing, and having a good time. Yep. She says, this one says, um, courting is done with an eye for marriage. Yep. I think dating and courting used to be the same thing, but somewhere along the way it changed. Now dating just seems to be screwing around, possibly seeing multiple people at once, hooking up, etc. It's a mashup of things. Courting is an old school term, basically means a guy is seriously pursuing a woman for the purpose of a real relationship. I don't really hear people use that term anymore, though. Yeah, they don't. They don't because of the ease at which so many young women will jump between the sheets. You know, this hookup thing. You don't even have to really know the dude. You know, ain't no kind of relationship jumping off. No talk of a, nothing. You just over this house, and, quote, hooking up. Or he comes up to yours to, quote, hook up. It's like what? It's like entertainment to young people. I don't understand this this mindset. You know, your body is a precious gift. Your health is a precious gift. Why would you gamble with it just to give some dude that you don't even know a good time for ten minutes? What are you doing? You know, there's people in business doing that line of work, and he could unass some money and go and handle his business over there somewhere. That's not your job, and you can't be that desperate for some. Because most of them ain't good at it anyway. So all you're doing is sitting up there like disappointed afterwards and mad because nothing that, nothing that satisfies you jumped off. I mean, let's think about this, ladies. How many of them are good enough that you would want to call them back for seconds because it was just so like mind-blowingly wonderful? The ones that do that are absolute man whores, okay? Because they got a lot of practice and they're good at it. So they got all, they be like busy, okay? So you don't necessarily want them either. But, I mean, if you're going to be having that kind of hookup situation, that would be the person who could have it to have it with because at least he's going to deliver. The rest of these jack leg fools don't know what the hell they're doing. Just wasting up your sheets. Wasting up your lingerie. <laughs> you're getting a Matty Patty and getting your hair done for 10 minutes of a waste of time, please. I wish I would. Get out. You don't know what the hell you're doing. Dating is passing time. Courting is dating with the goal of compatibility for matrimony. Okay, so everybody's pretty much on the same page. Huh, this lady says, I'm not sure if there is a difference between the two because I think they are both just different terms with the same idea of the next step in a serious relationship when you are engaged to be married after being friends for a while. No, no, honey, dating is not courtship. They're completely different. Courtship means no intimacy is involved and the man is actually serious about marriage. Dating is opposite. Bingo. Ding, ding, ding. There you go. Courting is when a man makes an effort that he is a worthy partner and deserves a chance. Dating is when two people become exclusive and mutually decide to explore a relationship. Dating is lightweight. Courting, courting is a serious possibility of marriage. Okay. Dating is let's mess around and see if this goes anywhere. <laughs> While courting is the act of preparing for marriage. Exactly. And like I said earlier, you know, when you're courting, your family is involved. Sometimes, you know, if you have like a church community or, you know, extended relatives, stuff, they're involved in it as well. Everybody's involved in it because, you know, when you get married, it's not just about you. You blend in families. So in the courting, it's, it's, you know, the person is getting known and getting to know everybody in your circle, your close friends, your family, you know, sometimes your coworkers. You know, whoever you spend a lot of time with, they have a relationship with those people just like you do because they are going to be invited into the inner circle. So they have to be. OK, so that's question number. Which one? Was, OK, that's number five. Let's move on to number six. What is the difference between having a boyfriend and having a husband? I think this is this is key. Because, you know, a lot of women, they treat these men, they, they baby daddy, they live in person, they, quote, boyfriend. They want, they have expectations of a, of, of a husband. You know, the fidelity and the commitment and all this kind of stuff. And if you're just dating this person, I'm not saying you can't make them kind of agreements, but is it really a sane expectation to have when you have two single people? 
Like, because anybody that pops up with no ring, ain't no conversation about marriage happening here. Sometimes they mention it, but it's some vague, you know, oh, yeah, it would be nice to get married. Okay, but that ain't, you know, if somebody's serious, they're talking about, let's get married next year. Let's start looking at venues. I've put this much money away, so in the spring, you know, I'm going to add another 10000 to it. We're going to go look for a house because I don't want to have, you know, put my kids in an apartment. We're going to buy a, we're going to buy a property. You know, this and that, blah, blah, blah. So he's got, like, plans. he got, like, step-by-step shit in line that he's going to make happen. I've saved, you know, $25,000 for our wedding, our honeymoon or whatever. You know, I mean, you know, the dude is going to have, like, some set plans that is very tangible actions that he has taken to make sure that when y'all step forward to this marriage that he got some shit happening, some stuff is in place. But you got to do just, you know, oh, you know what? Let's just see where it goes and stuff like that. He's just using you. I mean, like I said, you know, not every woman wants marriage. So, you know, you might be okay with that. So, but, you know, you have to make sure what it is that you want and then follow along. Okay, so let's talk about question number six. What the difference is between having a boyfriend and having a husband. A boyfriend is just a friend with benefits. A husband equals a legal commitment that comes with actual legal protections, benefits, etc. Exactly. None, because these men expect marriage privileges while just boyfriends. That's true. Boyfriends are pointless after so long, like two or three years. A husband is who you should be able to put a partner with, and he is your balance. Hmm. A husband is long-term commitment and family. A boyfriend is not family. But you would swear the way some of these women be treating these, quote, boyfriends, that he has, you know, been their husband for 20 years. It depends, because honestly, in the black community... The men cheat, lie, leave, and die without setting up provisions for the woman and children, even when they are married, sometimes more than not. Well, as long as he had a job, those kids would get some Social Security. Now, that I can tell you. Now, you know, any other stuff, like, you know, white dudes tend to set up life insurance policies. It's going to be enough to pay for their kids' education and set them up with a home and stuff like that. So they got, like, you know, a half a million dollar life insurance policy, three quarters of a million life insurance policy. So if they, they something happens to them, their kids get, you know, get covered. Their house, they have the clause in their mortgage where if they die, they get, um, the mortgage is instantly paid off through the insurance. They have a gap insurance or any car payments that they have. So if something happens to them, you know, the car is totaled or whatever, the car is instantly paid off. I mean, they take care of business and that's the kind of thing that's missing, not just in the black community, but a lot of young people don't think about that kind of, that kind of stuff. So you end up having, you know, you leave behind some dependents with nothing. But as long as that person had a job and they were taking Social Security out of the check, your kids at least can get that, you know, and get some help with their tuitions and stuff. Um, number six, the difference between having a boyfriend and having a husband. A boyfriend-girlfriend relationship can be easily ended without legalities. A husband is a life partner that legally becomes family and shares in all aspects of life. A piece of paper is signed and all debt is merged. <laughs> The difference is the commitment and the promise made in front of family and friends. That's true. These days, I don't know. No one is taking marriage seriously anymore. The self-interest levels are far too high. For them, any level of sacrifice for the greater whole and the health of the relationship is unthinkable. Wow. Depends on the woman, she says. For some, the only difference is the ring. Wedding and legality attached. For Other than that, they do everything the same as they did when they were just boyfriend and girlfriend. I don't agree with that, though. There are some things I'm not doing unless we're married, if I ever get married. I definitely believe in the wide body cow when you get the milk for, for free adage. Boyfriend is explo- exploitation with no guarantee that he will stay because leaving is easier. Husband, if it is with a respectable man, it will be a more secure position. She is protected by the law. Having been married to a dusty, both options are to me a huge scam for women. Oh, boy. Hmm. Interesting. A husband is by law someone who no, vows to be with you until your last breath. A boyfriend is someone you see who could possibly be a husband, but there's no legal bond. Boyfriends are pointless and a husband is the rock. Exactly. A boyfriend is a booty call. <laughs> a husband is a provider, protector, and problem solver. And this one writes, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be a difference to a lot of people from what I see it's just signing a piece of paper with the government having a ceremony because they're doing 
almost the same things in a boyfriend girlfriend relationship and ladies that keep telling you you shouldn't be doing that you're doing too much you're giving these men all these privileges and rights and 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 and, and bit of joys and stuff and you ain't married but for me a boyfriend has always been just a friend that i just so happened to sleep with that i'm not giving wife benefits to but i had to keep that to myself because if they knew how i really felt about this delusion they would have a problem with it but in my mind and heart i've always saw my boyfriends as friends and i never really believed in that culture of treating a boyfriend like a husband but i found myself in them anyway because this is the society that we live in and they would get mad at me for not being their their mule or ride or die for them for overextending myself and treating them like a husband i get complaints when i'm dating and they expect too much i'm not going over to the house over to his place to clean his house and wash his clothes I'm not co-signing anything for him. I'm not putting anything in my name and I'm not risking my credit for him. I'm not letting him drive my car. Oh, she must be my twin. I try not to babysit any kids and try not to date men with kids. It's a several things that I'm not doing and they will have a problem with saying that it's my job. I'm supposed to do that to prove my love. Nope. So I usually just get pegged as selfish. I'm like, why do all that just for a boyfriend? Of course, they would break up with me and say, you if you want another woman will okay next honey tell it oh it's, this is interesting she okay the difference between having a boyfriend and a husband temporary headache permanent headache okay i don't even know i have no and she's this one says boyfriends are easier to dump yes this is too you guys are too funny this is these are some really good and interesting responses this one says, wow, this is such a powerful question. I believe most women treat their boyfriends like a husband already. They do. The difference is that a boyfriend doesn't change the fact that you are a single woman. A boyfriend shouldn't be cleaned up after giving hot meals or giving all your time. Exactly. A boyfriend is for eggplant and kicking it. A husband is a solid life partner to lean on and go through the highs and lows of life with. Um, this one says, oh my God. A boyfriend is mostly a careless guy with no attention to the responsibilities that he has. A husband, on the other hand, is a man who shows some responsibilities and feels the obligations he has. Boyfriend is a term used to describe a person who is a regular companion of a female in a regular romantic relationship. Boyfriends are male companions who are not committed for long term. Hmm. This is interesting. You guys, this is this is some good stuff. A boyfriend is temporary and a husband is long term. Temporary and long term. Yeah, okay, so a lot of people agreed on that. They a lot of women said the same thing. Tem boyfriends are temporary and husbands are long term. Okay, so we all in agreement with that. I mean, that's the goal anyway. All right. Now let's move on to where was I? Okay, this is the last one. And this wasn't really a question, but what this did was give ladies the opportunity if they had something to share that wasn't covered in the previous questions and uh, they wanted to you know to share their thoughts this is this gave them the opportunity uh, this lady says having a boyfriend is a scam for most women I have fully agreed there and this one says having to type out the answers really put things into perspective for me you can't avoid the truth this way that was the goal. Thank you for getting it. That's what I try to do here. Like I said, I don't like it. Unless people write the advice column, I don't like to tell you what to do. I guide you to think about it and figure it out for yourself. To think about the pros and cons and what really is going on here. What benefit is this situation, this person, this experience bringing to your life? Is it beneficial to you or is it detrimental to you? Those are the, those are the questions that I always want to pose to you. And it's nice to see that somebody understands what I'm trying to do here. It says it all in the word. A boyfriend is like an overgrown child. <laughs> this one says boyfriends are overrated. And I wish women wouldn't take them so seriously. Wow. As far as I'm concerned, there's no difference between a boyfriend and a friend with benefits. It doesn't benefit women to allow men to waste our time. If we aren't married, we're single and should behave as such. Exactly. It's okay to be single, ladies. You have so much more peace in your life and they and will likely live longer. Yes, you can still get some D, but be discerning. Be careful and be extremely selective. And don't be bringing any old randoms into your house. I never let men know I have my own home because they will either get jealous 
or they'll start trying to game you into thinking they really want a commitment just to get your assets. Too many women fall for this. Be smart. There are rules to this vagabond life. That's right, girl. And this one says, um, off topic, but I love your work. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much for all that you do. You open my eyes to and heart and they found their true love. It's like you erased a rotten program in my mind. Hmm. Wishing you a very speedy and full recovery. To me, you are a spirit guide incarnated in human form, and I thank you for deeply for your guidance. Wow. This one says, boyfriends ain't shit. <laughs> Should single women over a certain age even consider marriage? Oh, she, ended, she had a question. You know, that's the individual thing. I don't really don't see too much benefit in it personally. There's so much to add to this topic, but to sum it up in a nutshell, I say I'm 45. I've had plenty of boyfriends from different races. I was married for 13 years. I'm now happily single and I'm just fine with the fact that I may be for the rest of my life. Men and husbands or boyfriends require a lot of work that you may never get fulfillment from. I'd like to spend the rest of my time in peace and giving all of my good energy to myself to repair the damage done from men. So you do the math. Hmm. Thank you, Deb, for always discussing what's real. I'm currently feeling trapped in this revolving door of having a boyfriend who says he's committed but doesn't put forth the actions of a committed man, like making plans to marry and truly commit to me. So, you know, get rid of this fool ass. Nothing else. You are awesome, Deb. Well, <laughs> what can I say? There's a lot of comments here. I'll probably post some of them on the wall. And this one talks about black women in specifics. It says black women need to stop hustling backwards on their elbows. Damn. If it's a man that isn't supportive, leave him alone. There's literally zero advantage to being associated with 90% of men who just want to waste their time. I'm a black woman, so I'm addressing black women. But obviously, these are universally true for all groups of men. Hmm. Uh. I would like for girlfriend versus wife behavior elaborated upon Deb style. Didn't I do that already? I think I did. I just have to think of what video it's in. I see people who have boyfriends and girlfriends are not happy. And I tell single people and tell single people to join their club. Hmm. Sadly, misery loves company. It's taboo for a woman to both be single and happy. You right. They just want to make you miserable. Due to most of our upbringing, we are programmed to set our value as women on having a man as a prize. And to cater to him forever, regardless of how bad he treats her. As Janet Jackson sung, what have you done for me lately? I am 21 and I believe that boyfriend-girlfriend relationships are juvenile and childish. Oh, and now she only 21. I had a boyfriend from the age of 18 to 20 and will not do it again. I plan on being courted and having a roster until marriage. Good plan. It saves a lot of time and emotions. Mm-hmm. As to say, I really enjoy your videos. They are like therapy sessions. Well, yes, I guess in some it's, I've been told that they're better than therapy. People who have had therapy for years and come here and listen to you know some videos and get straight to the point. If I was a therapist, that's how I would do it. I'm like, we're not gonna be wasting a whole bunch of time. Like you, like you delve into when you was in diapers and shit. Let's talk about what's going on right now. Okay, so that's how I approach problems. This is the problem. This is how you're gonna look at it. And then these are your pot. You're going to figure out your own response answer, though. But I'm just going to tell you the ways that you done fucked up. And so what you need to do to make it better. OK, that's my that's my thing. Oh, OK. So there you go. That's the end of that slide. You know, I always use the same template. That's what happened. I forgot to delete those slides. But anyway, that's um, that's it for that for the slideshow and the survey that we did for the show. Um, if you missed it, let's see, how can I do that? Well, the questions are here on the, in the video. I don't need to do any further posting. Um, I also want to talk about something like some of the ways that women, just to kind of reiterate, some of the ways that women do too much. Okay, this article was posted. Uh, who sent me this? Vanna, I think, sent me this article, sent me this link. The title is, My Boyfriend Refused to Share After I Paid His Rent, Food, Bought him clothes. Quote, I know you love you who, you know, little chocolate milk drinks. So I didn't get you one is what he told her. Now, this girl, I'm trying to figure out what in what we covered today 
about what you should expect to get in a relationship, what women want from a boyfriend slash, you know, husband, fiance, whatever, what she was getting. And this is what, you know, based, this is a true story. So she was with this dude for 12 years. She said she don't know how it lasted that long because he was the most selfish man that she ever met. She, she says, quote, I paid his rent. I bought his groceries. I took him clothes shopping. I even gave him rides until the day I bought him a car. And after I gave him that car, I paid for his insurance, his gas, oil changes, and auto repairs. And he couldn't even buy me a Yoo-Hoo. They even went to Costco or something, and they had a machine up front. And he comes back with a Yoo-Hoo, knowing that's her favorite drink. And he only got himself one. And then stood there and drank it in front of her. And she, through the story, she says this happened several different times. And she said, you know, to add insult to injury, he didn't even have a job. Okay? So she's doing all of this shit for a man who don't have a job and who won't even get her a dollar drink out the vending machine. But she's doing all of this for him. See, no. Finally, after 12 years, it looks like she finally woke up, though. But, yeah, because she's like, this isn't an isolated incident. On one occasion, he came to my house, pulled two packages of orange Tic Tac mints out of his pocket and said, I know how much you love orange Tic Tac, so I bought myself two packs of them, and I bought you none. He tells her that, and she continues to, to deal with him. Okay? I'm not going to tell you nothing. I'm just, I'm just sharing. Okay? Twelve years, yes, honey, more than a decade. She's dealing with something dusty like that. Okay, then earlier, you know, earlier in the week, we had a post up on the community wall asking if you went over to a man's house and he had just a mattress on the floor, would you spend the night like he had asked, you know, invited you to? And most of the women here said no, but I understand that where this when this question came from, women were responding by saying, well, yeah, I would buy furniture and I would build with him. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was like, okay. Huh. Then, you know, we have problems with the boyfriends that want to break up with you because, you know, about kids or you get pregnant and they dip out. You know, they want to leave you. Are you pregnant? They don't want to pay no child support. You know, why would a guy act like a boyfriend sometimes and the other times he's incredibly distant or rude? This one asked, my boyfriend likes doing Coca-Cola every once in a while and I hate it. Is it wrong for me to tell him it's me or the Coca-Cola? What do I do if my boyfriend wants me to wear makeup but I don't want to wear it? We have talked but he won't give up. So see, he's pressuring her to be what he wants like a dress up Barbie instead of accepting her and loving her for who and what she is the way that she is. And she's you know, feeling the pressure instead of cussing him out. My boyfriend is friends with his ex. He dated her for about five years. He never talks about her to me but that's he says sometimes he doesn't want to talk about her, but he can't help but be curious. And he looks her up online. Okay. And she's wondering what she should do about that. So these are all, you know, typical problems, not to mention the violence of boyfriends. You know, you break up with them or they, you know, they, you find out that they cheated on you, had an outside baby or something. So here they come. They want to stalk. They want to hurt you. You know, sometimes they do the murder-suicide thing. They want to hurt you and the kid, you know, your kids. They want to get back at you. I mean, all kind of vile and vicious things happen uh, with these alleged boyfriends. You know, these boyfriends. It's so much drama with boyfriends. And don't have a kid that's two year old because that's like, you know, a two year old at the hands of an adult male quote boyfriend. They don't usually survive. This one says, my boyfriend asked me for a group thingy. You know what I'm talking about? Where it involves this many people and I'm not sure what to do she says he's you know he's he wants to do that and I don't want to know what you know what where they do that at let me some dude come at me with some stuff like that he would be out of my life so fast it's like I'm not your free freak fool get out of here how should I respond if my boyfriend thinks tells me that he thinks I should lose weight and, you know, we get a lot of letters like that. Gain weight, get a boob job, get your, you know, your lips done, dye your hair, cut your hair, get, grow your hair, get boob implants. I mean, whatever. You know, the boyfriends are just like exerting themselves and telling these girls, you know, you're too fat, you're too skinny. I mean, whatever it is, you know, I don't like how you dress. You dress like a Gucci mom or something, you know, but she was dressed like that when you met her. You loved it then, so what's the problem? 
all this kind of stuff. So it's like, you know, you guys really need to think, you know, and then the lies, they tell you lies, they cheat on you. Like we saw in the video earlier, the example, you know, the women want to blame you when it's her dude that's the one that's dipping out on her. They don't have nothing to do with you. Just recently, there was a case in Las Vegas where the mother's boyfriend was holding her and uh, holding her hostage in the house. The other kid left to go to school, but the mother had given him a note that he hid in his clothes to give to the teacher saying that she's in the police because the dude was holding her hostage and she hadn't seen her other child for like a month or something. Come to find out the little kid's in the freezer, the boyfriend then off the little child and was holding her captive in, the, in her own house, the boyfriend. Okay, again, the boyfriend. So I don't know, everywhere, you know, and there's always these things where the woman leaves and, you know, like even the teenage girls, they don't want to be with the dude, right? And the little 17, 18, 19 year old, 20 year old guys, get mad they get jealous and so they end up offing the, your daughter because she had the nerve to not want him anymore and he refused to let her go so it's like if he can't have it then nobody can so these you know and these, these are all over google i mean i'm just saying you know talking generalities but there's all kind of cases like this you just do a search in google and you, you pull them up <clears throat> so you know you got to think about this though just think about it what benefits does having a boyfriend bring to a woman's life in reality? With all the problems, all the drama, all the abuse, all the, and we're not just talking like real physical, emotional, mental, the narcissism, you know, not holding up their end of the relationship, putting you off, You're talking about, yeah, we'll get married someday and here, you know, years pass by and you still hanging on. You having babies, you doing buying homes, you doing all buying cars, you doing all this stuff with him. And what you the one thing that you want, he's holding over your head like a carrot and not giving it to you. Why do women stay in these situations? What is it that you think that you're gonna get from this quote boyfriend that you're not? I mean, what what what, what does it take for you to wake up and realize that you're wasting your time with this clown? I don't understand it. Yeah, these. It, yeah, there's a lot of that SP, teen, what they call teen dating violence. Again, the boyfriends. So, you know, when you look at the risk to women, yes, there is DV, you know, with the husbands and stuff. But, you know, you really look at it, the majority of it is with boyfriends. The majority. So, you know, when you put all the teen market in there and the college students and stuff, it's boyfriends. Young 20s girls, it's boyfriends. Even older women, it's boyfriends. And the boyfriends, you know, because women are divorced or whatever, and the boyfriends not only attack them, but their kids too. So it's it's a real interesting situation, a very interesting dynamic. And the whole purpose of this show is to get you to think about what it is that you're getting, what it is you expect to get, and if what you expect to get is a reality or is it still a pipe dream. And then, you know, conduct your life accordingly. Because the way I feel having a quote boyfriend and this is my honest to god truth belief about it is a waste of a woman's damn time i'm not gonna hold i'm not gonna hold him accountable because i don't give a shit i'm not gonna invest in no dude i'm not married to and in order for me to be that you got to come in the gate doing some shit that's gonna be mind-boggling and get my attention and hold it I'm not going to give you chances. We're not going to negotiate. We're not going to compromise. If I tell you it's this way and then you fuck up, guess what? And I already told you what the repercussions, repercussions are. If you do this thing that fucks up, then it's over. You know, I mean, and we're not like a couple anyway, but I mean, I'm not even going to deal with you at all. Pretend that you lost my number. You never saw me before. I don't want no parts of you. You ain't calling me. You ain't coming to my house and don't position yourself in a way that could get you run over but my honda that would be a mistake you know i just love doing that to people so that, that would just give me an excuse but you know you ladies think about that though you know just think about it i know you guys come to what the fuck tuesday and it's all fun and entertainment and giggles and all that stuff but think about the years that we've been doing that show and the misery how many millions of hundreds of thousands up to a million when you count count all my columns from you know before it's several million women with boyfriends that just dogged them out and hurt them and used them and, you know, didn't code up their end of the bargain. As you know, those of you who might not know this, I've been doing this for 30 years. So it's not like I'm a spring chicken. And my column I used to do is 75 questions every week. 
from the early 90s, okay, till I came on YouTube. Now I do it on here because it's easier. <laughs> but, you know, you got, you know, 75 questions a week for years and years and years. That's a lot. The shows I did on Net Noir and the shows I did on Blog Talk Radio. Yeah, I'd say it's billions of women that I've had contact with. And I'm not really seeing where this boyfriend situation is benefiting women. You know, they cheat on you and they lie and then they, you know, they don't hold up their end of the bargain. They just don't agree. You know, I just don't understand it. So, um, yeah, that's what I got to say about boyfriends. If you got any questions, you know, feel free to, um, yeah, it was a lot, Vanna. But, you know, I wasn't doing nothing else, and so I would just do that. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, please hit that like button. The subscribe to the channel button. We're trying to hit that 30,000 and share a video. It doesn't have to be this one. It could be any video. What do we have coming up? Coming up, we got, of course, we're going to have, uh, I'm going to try to do this. If Candace can get it to me, then we're going to do What the Fuck Tuesday. We try to be back. I'm trying to get back on schedule. So we're trying to get back to Tuesday, right? And then the next show, I can't do this coming Sunday like I, I mean the next Sunday like I thought. But it's going to be two weeks at two weeks out. Um, oops, we're going to do this show two weeks out because I have to go to a, a bridal shower next Sunday, so I can't be here and there at the same time. I forgot, so I've had to move this forward for a week. But uh, this is what we're going to talk about parenting, and a lot of people. This this conversation was inspired by what was on the community wall talking about the young man, 16 years old, who wanted his mother to knock on his door and she had a problem with it and how so many parents don't want to knock on their kid's door. They don't want the kids to close the door. They don't insist the children not lock the door and some of them even take the door off the hinges altogether. So their daughters and sons are exposed to voyeurs who want to walk by and see them, you know, half dressed and all this kind of stuff. It's just totally inappropriate parenting. I'm not sure where they get the idea that that's what they need to do. But that is wrong, wrong, wrong on so many levels. And then they just just too involved in their kids' lives. They just, you know, kids are supposed to be able to make mistakes while you're there as their parent to help correct them and teach them. If you just helicopter over them all the time, when are they ever going to learn anything? But we're going to talk about all of that in detail on whatever day that is, the 19th, 17th, whatever that day is. But in the meantime, you guys, thank you very much for coming through Thank you for the super chat donations that you sent in. Thanks for my Patreon subscribers. Thank everybody for your attention and for taking the time to contribute your thoughts into the poll that we use for this show. I appreciate you. You guys enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I'll see you hopefully on Tuesday. Bye-bye.